Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to paint a beehive box just like this one. So I painted all four sides of this box and here it is in action with all of these bees using it as their home to store their honey. So I've gone ahead, I've painted the box with a soft like lavender-y purple, kind of like how my hair used to be. Um, and I've gone out ahead and sketched out uh, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger and I'm about to start painting their faces so let me show you what I have so far already reference picture I'm using and I just drew half of their faces and they're smiling and looking up and my mom has a thing for Tigger and Winnie the Pooh um, she has ever since I was a kid so let me show you what it looks like I went ahead and popped on my flash on my phone or my light on my phone and this is what they look like so far. I think they look really cute um, and I'm about to paint them um, and you guys will see my finished product. Just going ahead and using all of these different acrylics that I have collected over the years um, and just some, like a various set of uh, paint brushes and I went ahead and used this really pretty lilac purple um, and this brush to paint all over. And if you saw my uh, wall painting mural uh, video, then you'll recognize this brush, or maybe you won't because I don't think I actually showed it, but this is the brush that I used for all the fine detail work in that. And this is the brush that I used to paint this entire thing purple. All right, let's do this. So, like I mentioned before, I am using just basic acrylics that I picked up, you know, over the years. And these are really just from like Walmart, Target, whatever, usually around 50 to 99 cents each. Um, and they really do go a long way. I think that the hardest part of this project is the fact that I had to wait for some of the more sheer colors like this yellow that I used on Winnie's face to dry between coats so that way I could continue applying more coats and making it more opaque so maybe having nicer acrylics would be more beneficial. You can kind of tell the streakiness here. Um, but yeah, I think that maybe having nicer acrylics would be beneficial but you know, if you're doing this in a pinch, if it's just like, you know, a sweet home project that you're doing for yourself or you're doing with your kids, whatever, I think that that Walmart acrylics are just fine for that and you can actually get a lot done with them. So here you can see what Winnie's face looks like. The paint is very streaky, as I mentioned before. Um, so I went ahead and added several coats to this and the same thing was true for the white that I had, but it really depends on your individual paints. Sometimes even the same color from the same brand can be different in consistency and opaqueness. So just keep that in mind when you are going through and painting your box or your canvases. So on the topic of learning how to draw, honestly, it's a really hard answer and I can't really tell you exactly how to learn to draw. What I can say is I can give you some techniques to simplify what you're doing. So break things down into smaller shapes and objects that are more familiar, kind of like a heart shape, maybe for the bee wings, you know, maybe do just an oval instead of trying to take on this entire project all at once. And the other thing I can tell you is pay really close attention to your proportions because you know if something feels off it probably is off um, those are the best pieces of advice that I've got for you and in this particular situation this black pen that I was using is an acrylic pen that I got from Blick Art and I was able to go through do some of the details in black so that way I could paint over it since I mentioned that my paints are kind of sheer and go over it a couple of times, build that up and still be able to see the black lines underneath and then come back through and redo those black lines yet again. 
So I'm sure everyone says this, but practice really does make perfect. So just keep trying and you will get there. So right here I have used a mixture of this really pretty like blue, purpley kind of periwinkle-y color, um, white, and just the tiniest little dollop of black because I know better than to use a lot of black in this. Otherwise it will go rogue and be way too dark. So let's see what this color looks like, guys. Trying to get that kind of like blue gray color that Eeyore has. And I wanna say that this looks pretty spot on. I feel like maybe it needs to be like a little bit darker to like match his. So I feel like this would be his like, um, like the trunk of his mouth. And I feel like this should be a little bit darker. So that way it matches a little bit better. So I'm gonna use another like tiny, tiny, tiny little dollop of black and we'll see what this looks like. It's much better. And here is the beginning stage of me painting his face. So when it comes to mixing colors, there's one trick that I kind of forced myself into when I first started painting, and really it was just to save money, but I think in the end helped me out a lot. So I started with the primary colors, and I would only use primary colors to create any shades that I wanted. Um, this really helped me adjust tones, brightness, darkness, contrast, and be really specific with what type of color I was looking for. I would not just go to, you know, the acrylic style in Walmart and pick every color that I needed. One, because I felt like it was a bit of a waste of money, but two, because it gave me the opportunity to really see what colors do when they dance with each other. Just be aware if you are planning on just using primary colors that sometimes those colors can be a little bit hard to replicate. So it also teaches you how much paint you need so you aren't wasting paint or so that you are creating just the right amount. And in case you accidentally don't make enough paint, well, now you have yourself another challenge to kind of try and match that paint swatch that you've created. So I really enjoyed that challenge, but it might not be for everyone. So just keep that in mind. It can be a little bit frustrating. Okay guys, I am loving the final presentation of my little Eeyore. I just added this little bee so they'd be looking at each other like, hey, wait a second. Why do we look alike, but different, but alike? And I think it looks so good. I feel like it almost looks like it should just be in the show itself. Ha, huh, be in the show, ha ha ha. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to put a honey pot on the other side, spilling out honey, and I'm just gonna do another bee and a butterfly on the other side with maybe some flowers. Okay, so here's the thing. Yes, you see a hammer taking this box apart. Why, you may ask? Well, because little old me did not look to see which way the box was facing. Now, luckily, we had this little rubber mallet so we could use that to take this box apart and flip the two sides with the handles on it and fix it for the most part, but it was not ideal. Making this change also meant that I had to paint over some portions and repaint them. So here you can see I flipped this honey pot around. After I was done painting all my designs on the box, I used this satin enamel clear coat spray paint to add a subtle shine to it and seal in my design. I did about five coats and then I let this box air dry so that way it would not bother the bees at all. And here is what the final product looks like. That's the honey pot I flipped around. Here is Winnie and Tigger. Um, the next side I'm going to show you, I actually did not end up flipping all these plant designs because my mom said that she liked it just the way it was. So I guess that's just a quirky part of this box. Um, I can't say I'm super proud of this side. So this side lives on the back. 
uh, where no one will look at it. And here is the Eeyore design, which definitely is my favorite side. I think it's really cute and it has a lot of character to it. And I feel like it really encompasses what my mom wanted when she asked me to paint this. And here is the box in action outside in the wild with the bees. And I love the way that it turned out. I think my mom loves the way it turned out. And I think the bees are pretty happy in it. That is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and maybe even leave a comment if you have any thoughts or feelings. I will see you guys in my next video.